spent seven years working for a medical practice, and they were handcuffed by the rates they were able to charge based upon what Medicare would pay. Doctors do not have the lobbyists to lobby uh, members of Congress and the Senate. So doctors get squeezed. Doctors live in our community, every community from coast to coast. They contribute to the economy by buying nice houses, buying premium cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Meanwhile, Big Pharma, as you referenced, had a law passed where they own it. They just so that definitely needs to change, and it would be terrific if we can change that. Um, going back to the country needs to change and raise new revenue sources. We're a service economy now. A huge part of the econ economy is financial services. Myself and everybody else in this room probably pays 25% when you go into Walmart and buy anything because your income tax is about 18% or higher and then you pay sales tax. So you're paying 25% on the dollar for everything you earn. But if I make a financial tra transaction and anybody with a 401k, including myself, we don't get taxed on that. But the institutions that really do the big money transactions, and by the way, you can't beat them because they are making transactions in nanoseconds. And that's why a regular trader can't make any money. So we need to, and this has been proposed by Mr. Sanders and a few other people, even if it was a one or two percent tax, the amount of money that can go into the federal government to be devoted to education, human welfare, wherever it needs to be, but not the military, that would be a huge number. I'm actually the co-sponsor of a piece of legislation that proposes the transaction tax is a fraction of it's a very, you know, it's, made, it's, it's, it's less than exists in most other developed countries. You're right, it generates a huge amount of revenue, and I think it's a great idea. Because as we sleep, you can only trade until 4 p.m. Then the institutions, their computers trade overnight, and stocks move. You wake up in the morning, and what happened to my 401k? Because the institutions, and by that I mean insurance companies, etc. They're trading all night mechanically with tools that we can't even touch. So that's on the front end. On the back end, we need to, if we raise the uh, capital gains tax by one or two percent, this is incrementally, it would be another source of revenue. Um, another thing we can do is eliminate the oil subsidies that these companies get. That was back when oil was first discovered as an energy source and we subsidized their discovery uh, costs. These are all things, if you took the broad spectrum of the unfairness of taxes, it would take the burden off of the people in this room and really set this country right and help with the deficit. Um, two other things, I don't know if your uh, Judiciary Committee uh, has any effect on that. But uh, Mr. Sessions has decided to revive civil forfe forfeitures, which, on the face of it, if that was another country, we were, if that was in, let's like, say, Venezuela, we would be pointing to that country and say, how could you possibly do that? But police can pull you over with no crime committed and take your money. And it might take you years to get it back, and you might never get it back. And finally, uh, I only see a few people of color in the room. That person in Charlottesville was brown, and in another uh, state, he would be charged with three murders because those two policemen that died in the uh, helicopter crash died because there was a commission of a crime. And in many states, that would be a triple murder. That's all I have. Uh, so let me just respond. I'll come to you straight here. Yeah. Um, with respect to the tax reform, you're absolutely right. Um, we actually had three votes since I've been in Congress. We, the, the big oil companies that make the largest profits in the history of the world, 
uh, or at least until very recently did, we had three separate votes to end those subsidies. They were about $4 billion a year. But they get subsidized by the American taxpayer. These are companies, and even, I'm accepting your argument that maybe in the early days they needed it for exploration. I'm not even sure that's true, but I'll give them that. They surely don't need it now. So we tried three times. The first time we said, take away that money and invest it in renewable energy. It failed on a party line vote. Every single Republican voted no, we all voted yes. Second time we said, okay, we'll take it away and invest it in Pell Grants. Same thing, exactly on a party line vote. The third vote we had, we said, well, we'll, we'll do it, we'll use that money to pay down the debt. And the, my colleagues talked about it, also failed that vote. Now if you go to the Center for Responsive Politics website, and you look at where big oil gives money in Congress, you will not be surprised to learn the vast majority of their money goes to House Republicans. So this gets back to campaign finance money. You follow the money. And uh, so the reason I say that is, as we're about to see this effort by my colleagues in the House to enact uh, tax reform, and we absolutely do need tax reform. We need to give middle class families a tax break. We need to make you know cuts and, and make sure people at the very top are paying their fair share. I agree, but what we have to guard against is we're gonna see proposals to provide tax cuts for people who don't need them, uh, and for people, working people, who are going to pay for them. And the best evidence of that is in the repeal of the Affordable Care Act, where they were kicking 22 million people off their health insurance. That was to finance a 600 billion dollar tax cut for the richest people in this country. You have to pay for that, and the way it was paid for is you throw 22 million people off insurance. The 400 richest families in America would each get a seven million dollar tax cut in that bill. So this is this is where it's headed, and we really need to stand up and demand that those who represent us in Washington stand up and fight against any tax reform that's going to give more benefits to people at the very top at the expense of working people.